All right, hello. Today we are going to be working with Python again. We're going to be using Python with Selenium, with uh, requests library as well. We're going to be using Beautiful Sloop, Beautiful Soup for extracting data from HTML. And we're going to be using Pandas, and we're going to import, or rather we're going to extract data from a website and import that data either into an Excel spreadsheet or uh, into a MySQL database. Uh, we're going to be doing web scraping, data mining, whatever you want to call it. Um, well, let's go ahead and look at what spurred this. It started with a question on Quora. And um, that question was, let me bring it up here. Can I export a table HTML tag to an X, so the contents of an HTML table to an Excel spreadsheet or to a MySQL database uh, via Selenium and Python? Uh, so there were two answers. My answer took a while to create. The first answer was, I don't see any obstacles. In theory, you should be able to whatever. And he makes a couple of suggestions. My answer was a little bit snarky, but I went into a little bit more detail. It says, no, you can't export a table from HTML to Excel or MySQL using Selenium with Python. Um, and the simple reason, let me... Let me get my face out of the screen and start over here. Okay, so I said, no, you can't export from HTML to Excel or MySQL using Selenium with Python. And of course, uh, like I said, I think I'm a smart aleck. I said, but you're in luck. You just asked the wrong question. It's like if you ask, can I build a bookshelf using my table saw? The answer, of course, is still no. But a reasonable person would say that your table saw is one of the tools that you can use, but you're also going to need a hammer and nails or a screwdriver and screws, paint and varnish, clamps, glue, whatever else you might actually need, some dowels and a drill to uh, create that bookshelf. Um, and then I uh, admitted, of course, I'm not a reasonable person, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. Um, so the correct answer is probably this. You can use Selenium with Python to extract the contents of an HTML table, but you want to use some other tools to import that content into Excel or MySQL database. Um, and the tool I'm recommending you use is Pandas. So I'm going to show you how to use Selenium with Pandas to uh, mine that data from the web and how to uh, use Pandas to either create that in a spreadsheet or insert that into a database. And then I'll show you a way that you don't have to use either Selenium or Pandas. There's a lighter weight, but maybe a per slightly more difficult way that it gives you more options to use the requests library. So you don't need to launch a browser like you do with Selenium. With the requests library, you simply make an HTTP GET request, get the data, and then work with your data. Since we can't extract uh, data bit by bit um, from the page like we can with Selenium, we're going to use a library called Beautiful Soup to parse that HTML. And then we're going to uh, show not only how to use pandas, but to use a simple CSV writer to uh, append the output. Now, all the information is both in my post on Quora here. Um, and we'll work through this code as well as on my blog. And I posted the code on GitHub. So uh, to reference this, sometimes it's hard to find things in Quora uh, when you're looking for it. It's It comes up in Google search results, but it doesn't come up um, all the time when you're searching for the item, which I discovered when I first tried to start this recording. All right, so on my blog at fijiaron.wordpress.com, let's make sure this fits in the page. Close the cookies, show all. Um, so I decided to demonstrate this. We're going to get the prices of Bitcoin, Ethereum, get a whole list of cryptocurrencies, um, and Put them into a table so you can you know do whatever analysis you want on that data and you can extract the prices so in my blog post you can see i have uh my mysql table as the image just a screenshot um and it links back to the quora post and it goes into a little more detail has some nicer formatting um but rather than just walk through the blog post um i will go ahead and um 
step through each bit of the code individually so we can understand it. Oh, and also uh, you can just go directly to, uh, to GitHub to get the gist. Um, Actually, uh, it looks like that embedded gist is kind of a pain. Um, but anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and close that out. And um, um, first, let's let's demonstrate the data we want to get. So um, we want to go to coinmarketcap.com. Uh, this just uh, when I searched up like a cryptocurrency table. This was the, the first result that wasn't an ad. Um, Coinbase doesn't have a table, it has a bunch of divs, so that didn't demonstrate what I wanted. Um, and there's, there's probably lots of other places you can go. But anyway, here's the table we want, right? This table of currencies. We've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance, Tether, and uh, down here we've got Dogecoin for those of you doggy fans. Um, and whatever else, I, I don't know a lot about cryptocurrency, but this is a table and we can inspect that, right? Uh, so just clicking on the, right clicking on the HTML here in Chrome and it shows I've got a table uh, and it has a heading here, the name, price, 24 hour change, seven day change, market cap, volume, etc. And then it has each row. So we've got the first row, right? Um, this first row is Bitcoin. The second row is Ethereum, uh, BTC, um, or BNB, uh, oh, BTC is Bitcoin, Binance coin, which a lot of other coins are based on Binance, uh, which I think is based on Ethereum or fork from, I don't know. I'm not a crypto expert. So anyway, uh, what we can do is we can get this table contents using Selenium WebDriver. And let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to grab the URL. I'm going to close down my browser and I'm going to launch a terminal. Uh, I say I'm going to launch a terminal. Okay, new window here. Drag it over here. All right. And let's let's kill my face off completely. Um, I don't think I've ever messed with the uh, display and video capture in OBS while I'm recording. We'll see how it goes. But it looks like from my OBS display that my pretty face is gone. All right, so um, I'm going to go to my scratch directory and I'm going to create a directory, fake directory. Um, let's call this uh, crypto pricing Python. Uh, that's a good start. Okay. Oops, cd dot dot slash. Crypto pricing Python. Okay, now we're in the right directory. Um, I'm going to create a virtual environment and use that. So I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to use pip env uh, install. All right, so I've got that there. And uh, the first thing I'm going to need, I'm going to do pip in, uh, pip env install uh, Selenium. We need the Selenium library to start off. We'll need the Pandas library. We'll need uh, the uh, MySQL connector. Uh, we'll need some more requests. Beautiful soup. Um, we'll see what else we need. I think I've got them all listed on the, the GitHub gist. Let's see if we can find, there we go. There's the gist URL. I'll paste this into the uh, description, I guess. I th I'm not sure if that's a complete list of the dependencies. Um, I didn't add a requirements.txt or a pip file when I did this because it was kind of tutorial driven. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and close that down. Uh, I don't know what possibilities. Let's look at our pip file. Did that not work? I need to watch what's going on here. Installing Selenium. Should say it's already there, right? All right. Um, 
and now I can go to IPython and this only works because I have IPython installed in my root virtual environment. Pipm takes my root virtual environment and adds on top of that. Anyway, um, we'll see what happens here. Uh, so we want to uh, oh, we want to from Selenium import web driver, right? Uh, simple stuff for those of you uh, web driver uh, veterans. We'll just uh, create a Chrome instance. Capital C for Chrome. It should launch a browser. Good. That looks good to me. I'm going to resize this. Um, I should probably do that. Uh, Uh, nope. uh, is it set? I was right. Sit, uh, set window rectangle. Yep. Uh, X, we want it to be, um, I don't know, uh, 800 wide by. Eight hundred. We'll try that. Uh, whoops! It went off screen. So I, I think I actually need it to be smaller. Um, Cause I'm using this small screen. So X is a. Uh, we'll go six hundred. Am I doing this the wrong way? I. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to do it uh, the old-fashioned way, which is the manual way. Uh, so we want uh, driver equals web driver Chrome. And I'm just going to move it aside here so that I can go back and forth. I've got my new keyboard, but I don't have all my shortcuts fixed up. My arrow keys fell off of my old keyboard. Uh, you don't have the video capture anyway. I was just holding up the old broken keyboard. All right, uh, now uh, we want to driver.get. HTTPS uh, coin market cap, I think, dot com. We'll see if it looks right. Um, looks vaguely right. Yeah, okay, and then we want to get our table. Uh, so I'm going to uh, bring up my Chrome Inspector or my Chrome Dev Tools. Um, bring up Control F to bring up my Finder. Hide all that styles, and I am just going to search for tables and oops, not a tabler, a table. And it turns out there's only one table on this page. I'm not going to go for um, absolute accuracy. This is good enough for me. Uh, we could do something like we could say. Uh, table uh, dot what was it CBC table I don't remember uh, CMC table so I could do uh, class equals CMC table for a good X path uh, no I'd have to do class contains um, but I bet I can uh, get this with. Uh, there we go. We've got it. Uh, but uh, I just need a table. Whack, whack, table. Uh, so I can do uh, driver dot find element. Uh, and then we'll do find element by X path here. This is a little sloppier than my actual code, but it's a little easier to see. So slash slash table, right? And then we see the table here. It's a, uh, oops, Th there it is in my dot, but I will, uh, I will do table equals driver find uh, element by X path slash slash table. And then we can see the type of table is a uh, Selenium web driver uh, web element. <clears throat> So it says find element by star are deprecated, so we could use find element uh, itself. That's This is a Selenium 4.0. So I can say find element, and I can say xpath, 
comma table. Or I could import Selenium WebDriver something something by. Uh, I don't need the by, uh, so by XPath. This gives me my table, and we've got uh, another tabler. Table is a, and we can do table dot text, and we see that gives us all the text. Uh, but what we actually don't do, we don't want to parse the text. Uh, we could do that. We could just get table text and parse all that. Um, one thing we could do is we could do table dot uh, find elements, um, and then we could do like uh, tag name, and we could say uh, let's start with a uh, uh, th to just get the heading, right? Um, So we do headings equals uh, here, and then we can do for heading in headings print heading dot text, and there we see we get uh, our text here for these different things. Let's make sure everything is on screen to see uh, my screen and my OBS screen. It looks like are a little bit out of alignment because it's uh, some weird small screen size. All right, so here's our headings. Let's go ahead and, and, uh, and look at our thing. So we've got this number, name, price, 24 hour. Uh, now the number, it seems didn't, uh, the heading, it didn't like that. Last seven days, um, so on, circulating supply. It looks good. Uh, we've got our headings, and uh, what we could do is we could do it another way. We could do headings equals we could use a list comprehension, right? Uh, heading for, uh, and we're really just moving every for heading in headings. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then we can do heading dot uh, text. And we get the same result. Or rather, uh, we, we get, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't print it out, it gets our result. But we have here the empty heading, which I'm guessing, yeah, that's where the stars are. And then we've got uh, number, name, et cetera. Um, I guess price is, it says volume here. So that's, oh, um, I need to expand it. There we go, price and volume over here because uh, it's, uh, its display was a little bit wonky. Okay. Good enough for now. Um, so we can get our headings that way, and we can do the same thing. Um, right? We could do um, for um, row in driver, uh, uh, well, not driver, table, our table element, find element tag name uh, tr. We can print the row. Dot text. We'll do that. Uh, find elements plural. That's really funky. And it goes through and, and prints all of our coins. Um, And their prices. You can see here, um, most of the coins, I think it's maybe everything except for the top 10. Uh, the top 10, like Bitcoin, has all these volume and information. Maybe it's not just the top 10. But you can see, yeah, it's not just the top 10, but these primary all have volumes and uh, whatnot. And then we get down to these later ones, and it just has a name and price uh, and so on. See, it doesn't. Let's see, what is the last one we've got? Uh, Ravencoin. I'm confused. Anyway, that's what I thought I saw on them, but it doesn't matter. We only we only really want the top ten. So um, I'm curious. Uh, Selenium get first. 10 results in find all.
is I don't I don't actually think there's a way to do that in Selenium. Oh, we could uh, use the position less than or equal to uh, in XPath, but rather it's easier to uh, get all of our elements. I think. Um, I don't want to see all of them. So we've got table. Uh, Tag name TR and I can say TRs and uh, right, I can do one dot dot ten. Will that work? Uh, Python, return part of a list. Oh, colon. There we go. Um, so I could suit say for um, row in TRs one ten. So stupid, and then we can print uh, row dot text. There we go, and we get from uh, we get from Bitcoin to uh, polka dot, and we leave off the first row, which is blank. Um, and actually, that's that's uh, exclusive of the bottom of the last one. Um, Python slice list inclusive probably the short answer is to just uh, yeah I think there's something you can do but uh, you just add one So that includes up to 11, which is our doggy Dogecoin. Um, okay, so that's enough. Uh, that's enough Selenium for today, don't you think? Um, let's go ahead and switch gears. Now that we've got our rows, uh, more specifically, all we've got is our table in Selenium. And we can do table dot get. Uh, we just want to get the HTML for our table. We don't want to spend our time in Selenium getting each individual element. We just want to slurp up our data and handle it later. Uh, and pandas can actually do a pretty good job of that. Um, so let's see here. Um, I'm trying to move my other desktop so I can look at my notes. Not that one. Okay, it looks like I closed. Uh, uh, that that's enough for me. I'll I'll just move that off screen, and uh, and I'll be able to look at that so I get my syntax right when I'm typing things. Um, next thing we want to do is we want to install pandas, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to exit out of here. We'll come back to that. I'm going to do pip m install pandas. Pandas is uh, the Python something something data science analysis. Uh, I don't know what pandas stand for. Python data analysis library. It, it's not even close. Um, but uh, that's the library we're going to use. And pandas is the data science library. Um, at the core of pandas is, of course, NumPy, and NumPy allows all sorts of things like uh, arrays and, and some fancy actions and more efficient uh, data access, sorting, and so on. Pandas is going to take a long time to install. Um, there we go.
it looks like we're done. So now I can uh, so I look at my pip file. Yeah, there we go. And we've got selenium and pandas involved. I bring up IPython and uh, right. Um, that's pretty much the the previous code we need. We'll, we'll get back to that. Um, I'll just uh, from Selenium import WebDriver, and then I'm going to do uh, driver equals WebDriver dot Chrome again. Launch my Chrome browser. Flip back over here, driver dot get. Uh, what is the URL? I need to look off screen to see. Uh, CoinMarketCap.com. HTTPS colon slash slash CoinMarketCap.com. It opens the URL here. Now we want to get that table. We know it's the table, so we say table equals driver find element um, and keep it happy. We'll just put XPath and then slash slash table. And then we've got our table. Okay, so now pandas can handle this table, um, or rather it can handle the HTML. Pandas can actually, using Selenium, um, uh, pandas data frame specifically. So um, let me see, I wanna import pandas, and I can, uh, I want to use a data frame. A data frame, you can think of a data frame as a programmatic representation of a spreadsheet or a database table or um, a multi-dimensional array. Uh, this is how it works. So if I want a data frame, I'll call it data frame equals pandas dot data frame. And that'll create me a data frame. An empty data frame uh, that has no columns. I can do data frame, append, uh, and I think I need to append a row. So if I do one, two, three, uh, and then I can do it again. I can data frame append four, five, six, um, and I can like data frame zero. Uh, right, data frame uh, get is it? Oh, it says it's uh, oh. Uh, hmm. It didn't append. Maybe I need to do something else. Okay, I can't interrupt only series and data frame objects. So one, two, three. Oops. Let's do I need to do DF equals DF. All right, um, looks like I need to relearn something. Uh, create data frame and add rows Python or pandas. Data frame. Uh, so you can put a column. Uh, directly in there with the key, just like you would in a list. That's not the way we want to do it. Uh, you can append, append a hash or a, a dictionary. Create an entry data frame, columns and index. All right, so it looks like it's a little trickier. Um, so you can you can do it different ways. Uh, we need to have keys um, or, or headings, right? It's, it's like creating a spreadsheet without headings. Doesn't make sense. So we need to have keys in there. Uh, so I think we do data frame append, and then we did uh, a colon one, b colon two, or whatever, c colon four then. How about that? Oh, I need to have my keys be strings because this is Python. Uh, 
Um, we're learning together or you're watching me learn. So we can do columns or index. Uh, ignore index is true. Okay, so that's, that's all we need to have. It was telling me... Uh, Right, and then we can append again. We can do like, uh, I wonder if we do like this uh, five, six, uh, eight. Yeah, it's still empty. That's, I don't know. Uh, I guess I still need to define my column. Uh, I've got my headings, right? Nope. Uh, headings equals table dot uh, find elements tag name th. Okay. Um, and I'm going to do a list comprehension on here. Uh, remember we did that before. Uh, There we go. For th in table find elements, if I've still got my table, uh, we want to get the th.txt and create a list of headings. There we go. Um, df data. Um, columns equals headings and then can we uh, ah. no uh, actually so if we want to use this uh, non data we need a b c I'm really failing here. All right, data frame columns. So we need to initialize it. Uh, okay, so df equals pandas dot data frame columns equals. We'll create our list here. A uh, b c. Yeah. Okay. So we've got an empty data frame, but we've got columns, and then we can uh, import our stuff, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm about to abandon this because this isn't the way I want to do it. I just want to get my data uh, to get a list of lists. Uh, in other words, uh, table data and put it in here. But pandas also can look for an HTML table and parse its contents. It'll look for the TH and it'll create these columns. It'll look for TRs and TDs and put the actual data in all by itself. I just wanted to give you a little uh, low-lying example. So if I do, now if I do DF append, um, I don't know where I'm going to get to. It's okay. Pandas data frame append list. Maybe we're just on the wrong page because that geeks for geeks was geeking me out. Uh, So this is the data that we can put in right here. And you can see here we have columns. Uh, let's look at the actual document. Nope, this is not the actual documentation. This is kite. Um, 
So we need to append a data frame, apparently. We can't append a list. I don't know about that. Python, append list to data frame. Is this the one we were originally looking at? Create a data frame, create a columns. Use location, to, okay, to append it to the length. In other words, the next index and um, That's really weird. You would think uh, it would go right in. It would just automatically go to whatever. So yeah, we've got to cast our list to a data frame and all that. Let's not worry about doing that um, because like I said, there's an easier way, which is why we're using pandas in the first place. All right, so um, we don't even want to worry about that. We want to do... Uh, Pandas dot um, read HTML. Now we could put a URL here, or we could put our table in here. So we're going to put our table, right? Um, we're going to call this our our table uh, data frame. Oh, uh, we need to we need to get the text. So right, table is a web element table is a web element. So if we do table text, uh, that's not going to give us the HTML we need to parse. Oops, daisy. All right. Um, what we want to do is we want to pandas uh, from HTML. Oh, pandas read HTML. Um, that's right. And what we want to do is we want to do table get attribute outer HTML. So this is going to return us the HTML of the table element itself. And we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, let's 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 look at that first. All right. So we do. Table HTML equals table dot get attribute, and then we do table HTML just to look at it, and this gives us a string that is our table uh, with all the, the the juicy bits inside of it. So now we've got our table HTML. We can do um, pandas uh, read HTML. And uh, then we're going to call this uh, table uh, data frame. And then we can see the type of uh, table HTML is a string. The type of table itself, again, is a web driver web element. And the type of table data frame is a list. Oh, uh, it is a list. Uh, but the length of table data frame is one. In other words, read HTML looks for all table tags in the HTML document um, or the URL, and it returns a list of tables. We have only one table that we've already got from Selenium, so we can do um, table data frame sub zero. We can see this is a data frame. Right, uh, so we can see, yeah, pandas core frame data frame. Uh, so what we have now is data, table underscore data frame itself is a list of data frames. So let's let's do this again. Pandas read HTML uh, table data frames. All right, and then length of Table data frames 
is there, one. And then what we want to do is we want to see table data frame. Individual is a uh, table data frames, plural, our first index, sub zero. And now we have table data frame, and you can see it has 100 rows. And we can do table data frame sub one. Um, I can't do that. Say pandas, but uh, get a specific row. Uh, we've got to use that I look again, huh? All right. Uh, sub one, there we go. So sub one is Ethereum, sub zero is uh, Bitcoin, and sub ten should be uh, doggy coin, right? Uh, nope, uh, sub nine. Yep, uh, okay, so sub nine, the tenth element, is is our doge coin, our doggy coin, our meme coin, our whatever. And then, uh, but, I don't even know if this is actually a list. Yeah. Um, it's size of data frame. Uh, is it just size? Oh, so we can do a number of rows. I hate how everything's magic, right? Just stick to our API. Um, we can get dot info. We can do length on it because it's doing magic. Uh, the number of elements. So this would be the proper way of doing it uh, in my mind. Getting the size property of the. Ah. Oh, uh, that's because it's DF. Uh, right. Uh, to try again. Uh, table data frame. Size should be a hundred. Table data frame. Eleven hundred. Hundred rows times eleven columns. All right. So size doesn't tell us the size. Um, is it uh is it rows then? We can get columns. And it'll tell us we've got, uh, okay, so we could do the length of call. Um, is it records? Uh, series. I guess you call length on DF, which is not right. Uh, length on index, huh? All right. I'm going to rewrite pandas data frames into a consistent API. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to show you how we can do this, right? So we've used Selenium, we've got our table, we got our table HTML, and we loaded it into pandas with uh, read HTML. Ha ha ha.
right? Table data frames equals pandas dot read HTML. Uh, and our one data frame is a uh, table data frames sub zero. And it shows we have 100 rows. This is both wrong and magical. Um, or it's wrong because it's magical. But um, them some breaks. But apparently that's the way that, uh, that they expect you to do it. Okay, so we've got what we need though. We've got our data into a, into a data frame. We can get it out by we can uh, take the data frame. We can actually do two Excel or two CSV. We'll just go straight to two Excel. Now, if you use two Excel by itself, I think you need to install, um, um, I think it's Pi XLS. What is it called? You need to install Open Pi XL. So, um, and you give it a file name as the first argument, right? Uh, data dot. If that doesn't work, what you want to do is you want to do pip install. Um, let's get out of here. So here I'm going to pip env install um, open pi XL. Then we'll start over again. Because despite all my fumbling around, we really haven't done a lot. All right, now installing dependencies. Okay, so now we can uh, cat our pip. Uh, file again. We can see we have three dependencies: Selenium, Pandas, Open PyXML. All right, I Python. All right. From Selenium, import WebDriver. Driver equals WebDriver dot Chrome. It's going to launch Chrome. We're going to flip back over here, and we're going to do driver dot get uh, HTTPS uh, coin market cap. I'm going to say table equals driver dot find element uh, by tag name table or we can do by x path or whatever we want we've got an element we got table dot text that looks like our correct table now what we want to do is we want our table HTML equals um, table our web element get attribute uh, outer HTML HTML is capitalized and now we've got our table HTML which is just a string that contains our HTML contents now uh, next thing we want to do is we want to uh, import pandas once we've imported pandas we can create a data frame from our HTML right so we can do uh, table uh, data frame equals pandas dot uh, read HTML and we can actually pass in a URL we can pass in a whole document or we can pass in uh, our single uh, element text which is we're just going to pass in our uh, table HTML um, because that way we know we're getting just one table so that we can uh, get that first element here right and now we've got our table data frame. We're good. We've got 100 rows. Yeah, the I looks, the index, the columns, the length of the data frame, like the data frame has a length. All right, I'm not going to dwell on that anymore. So now we can take our data frame and we can just export this to uh, Excel. To Excel. Um, and we'll just call this uh, data.xlsx. 
and we can list our files. We can see we've got, uh, well, this is the only file we've got here. Let's, let's look at our history. I think I'm pretty close and I can, uh, I can just grab this and uh, I'm going to save this into a file. I'm going to open up code, bring it over here. Uh, get uh, crypto prices dot pi. It's a good start. I'll just paste this. Now all our inspection here. I'll just delete these. So here's our first section. We want to. Uh, we want to uh, get table from uh, using Selenium. Get table with data. And there, our end result is this HTML string. All right, our next step is to uh, load uh, HTML table into pandas data frame and we can see here we import pandas uh, this line here line 11 is just inspecting uh, for demonstration purposes and we export it to a file that's all it takes to export to Excel let's look at how we can do the same thing or something similar using uh, a MySQL database so I'm going to hop on over to my terminal here again right I just have a a local MySQL database uh, right here and I can use test for example and I've actually got tables right uh, so I'm gonna drop uh, prices because I did this earlier uh, drop table prices All right. there we go uh, no tables uh, so now we've got a clean database, just a test database. I also created like a crypto database as well. Uh, but we're just going to use the test database on this instance because using the test database on this unsecured uh, MySQL, actually MariaDB server, MariaDB is a fork of MySQL. Uh, this test database, uh, I don't need a username and password, which makes it easier for demonstration purposes. Um, all right. So... Some other challenges we'll have here is we need to uh, we need to have the MySQL connector installed. So uh, you can do uh, pipm install uh, my MySQL connector Python. Uh, <laughs> not here though. Let's exit out of there. And it's going to come over here. Since I already have it installed, I won't need to uh, stop by Python and reload it to get it. Uh, it's just going to put it in my pipm. And then the next thing I need to install is SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy is an ORM or an object relational mapping library. It just makes it easier to interface with, um, with the MySQL database or Postgres or SQLite or SQL Server or Oracle. Uh, database. Um, it's an abstraction layer that allows you to map objects to uh, database rows, essentially. Um, so now we've installed the, the MySQL connector. We're also going to install uh, SQL Alchemy. And that's going to take a minute as well, too. I should have just had my pip environment set up. Uh, that is that is one problem I'm going to rant a little bit about Python and uh, package management. Uh, every time you create a virtual environment, it downloads another copy of all the libraries and all of their dependencies you need. It's better than uh, NPM, the Node Package Manager for JavaScript, used to be, but really you should be caching all these libraries. Um, locally in, in you know, like a, like some dot folder or site packages, uh, whatever. Or you should at least, if you have a virtual machine, uh, 
or, or, or not a virtual machine, a, a virtual environment. And pipenv is using that parent virtual environment instead of creating its own. You should be able to just get the packages from the virtual environment you already have. Rant over, SQL Alchemy installed. We're good to go. Um, and that was, again, just for demonstration purposes. So um, now what I want to do is I want to do from MySQL import connector. That, ins that imports the MySQL connector. I don't know if this is strictly necessary on its own. Uh, it is if you want to use the MySQL directly, uh, MySQL connector directly. But uh, I just wanted to import SQL Alchemy. So let me know if, if you do this with or without the MySQL connector um, and if it throws an error. Okay, so we've imported SQL Alchemy and the next step we want to do is we want to create a connection, right? So we want to do connection equals SQL Alchemy dot... I need to look at my notes. dot create engine that's the that's the right keyword and create engine we pass in our query string or not our query string our our connection string my so mysql is the database type mysql connector is the actual driver so it uses the mysql uh, library the mysql connector driver there are some other connectors like the, the Pi MySQL DB connector is another one uh, that I'm aware of, um, but it doesn't matter too much. And then you can put, uh, so you can put username, uh, colon, password, um, at localhost, uh, or at whatever your remote MySQL server name is, and then you can put your, your database name. In this case, we're going to put test. In this case, we actually don't even need the username and password. Uh, because we're using the test database, which is unsecured, um, and we can we can do that. So we've got a connection, right? Our connection object is a SQL Alchemy connection, and or a SQL Alchemy engine. Uh, create engine, not create connection. Uh, subtle difference, but uh, it's important. Now, um, it's pretty easy, uh, just like we did with two Excel. And once we had pandas lined up and we had our uh, our Excel library, which um, I don't remember if I did, but we want the, 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 the library we want is um, uh, no, stop. <laughs> Installing install. Open Pi Excel. So I need to clean up my dependencies. We do not need this install. We do not need pip. That's going to make it huge. And that's going to screw up my pip file lock. And I'll probably blow that away at some point. But we just need Open Pi Excel to use. Panda uses the Open Pi Excel. Instead of the, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of different libraries. It's, I listed them in my blog post. Installing the pip. Okay. So this pip file lock is going to have a bunch of things that we do not need. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove pipfile.lock. I'm going to do uh, pipm install. And it's going to create a, it's going to use my pip file here with only the packages I need, not with pip package and not with install package, whatever that is. Um, so it's going to recreate a pipfile.lock and reinstall all of these. And I'm not even going to worry about that at this point. Um, I'm going to, if I love uh, swiping screen so much, I'm going to go ahead and do that and make sure everything is visible there. 
make that a little bit smaller just in case. Yeah, okay. All right, so everything's good. Our pit file lock is clean. Um, and we're ready to, uh, we've got our connection already. So now what we want to do is we want to do data uh, table data frame, right? For our table data frame, just like we did to Excel, we can do to SQL. And we can see the parameters on here, right? Uh, a name, connection, if exists, and uh, index, we, we want to say true or false. So what we can do is we can do data frame to SQL. We want our connection, our, our con, uh, single end connection is our con, uh, our two n our SQL Alchemy engine, right? Um, and let's see, back to notes for the other parameters. So we've got our connection. I think the next is oh yeah name. Name that's the that's the uh, the table name that we want to use. Uh, our connection, uh, our database name is part of our connection string. Our table name, though, we're specifying here is our prices. Um, and then if exists, now this can be uh, a couple of different values. It can be um, append or it can be overwrite, I think. Um, uh, I'm going to have to find out. If exists, okay, so fail, in other words, if the table already exists, fail, or if the table already exists, replace the table, or if the table already exists, append to the table. Uh, in my example code, I used append. I'm just going to use replace. So we're going to recreate the table every time we uh, do it. So our connection is our SQL Alchemy engine. Uh, the name is the name of our table, and uh, if exists, we're going to uh, replace. I was like, I forgot it already. I thought it was over, right? And then uh, uh, index equals, uh, you can have true by default. Uh, I'm going to have false. Uh, we don't need to add an index for this. All right, so data frame to SQL. Um, and let's go ahead and look at this. So we're going to hop back over to MySQL or MariaDB. Uh, we want to use test database. We want to show tables. Our tables has price. And I think I wanted to call it prices, but it doesn't matter. We can do select star from price. Uh, or we can do select star from price uh, limit 10 to just cut our top 10. And there we go. Uh, oops. Trying to make this so it'll all fit on here, so or at least so that'll be readable. That's not going to be readable. Now, one thing I did notice um, because it's doing it's taking the name Bitcoin One BTC by Ethereum Two ETH by. So we've got a problem here, and let me demonstrate what that problem is. Um, or let me illustrate what that problem is. Um, what is our site? Coinmarketcap.com. Not endorsed, by the way. Um, they, they'd probably pay me not to use them as a demo. Uh, not because uh, of the automation factor, which I'm sure there's a lot of scrapers going here, but because I'm such an idiot that uh, they don't want to be affiliated with me. All right, so what we're getting is we're getting Bitcoin, BTC, and buy are all getting lumped together because we're just taking the TD, right? We're doing TD.getText uh, text on that, um, or we're getting the text of that. Technically, we're not doing that. So let me show you how we can do this uh, by using beautiful soup, right? With Selenium, we could we could actually go through and do this with Selenium. Let's do it with Selenium first, and then um, right. So we've got table, oh, not here, MariaDB. Do we still have our table? Yes, our web driver object. So I can do table dot find elements, right? Uh, and then we want to go by tag name, and we want to get tr. 
And uh, we want to get rows. So rows is a list of web elements, right? Uh, so I can do rows sub one dot text, and it's going to show me. Uh, remember, row zero is empty. Just that's the way they constructed their table on that web page. Oh nope, row zero is the headings. Um, row one is uh, Bitcoin. Uh, row two would be Ethereum, and row ten would be Doggy Coin, uh, and so on. Um, so we've got all those things, and what we want to do is we want to, um, let's see, yeah, so here, like Bitcoin Cash, it doesn't have all those other, the high, low, uh, the 24-hour, seven-day spread, the volume, uh, and the chart stuff, which doesn't come up. Anyway, so we, we're getting the text for each of these rows in HTML. What we want to do is we want to uh, look at the first column, right? So we've got rows. We'll stick with rows sub one, right? Uh, just to uh, create a variable so we can see Bitcoin. Let's call this actually, let's call this Bitcoin row. Now we can refer to it as Bitcoin row. All right, and then we can do a Bitcoin row uh, find element. Uh, find element. Uh, and let's go ahead and look at this. Um, control F will give me my search. I'll bring that down here. Um, TR, we've got 101 rows. Uh, TR sub one gives me my first row. Uh, oh yeah, it's it's one index, so it's TR sub two gives me Bitcoin. Or no, wait, wait, that's that's not right. TH, okay. Uh, T, uh, uh, oh, uh, so we need uh, T body instead of TH dot TR. All right, so table. T body TR sub one. This gives this is our X path, which gives us our Bitcoin. And then we do TD, right? We want TD sub one is the star, sub two is the logo for Bitcoin, I believe, and sub three. Oh, sub three includes uh, both the logo, the name, the number. So it's Bitcoin one BTC and the logo, which actually won't show up when we do a get text. So it's column three that we want here. Um, and so we could actually grab this and um, get the information we want there. But uh, all right, so table row find element. We don't want to refer to it by the index though. What we want to do is we want to see that um, actually what we want to find is we want to find these individual things. We want to find these P and the, the CMC link. So uh, so for each table row, we want to find the T, uh, the TD uh, with class equals CMC link. That doesn't find any uh, uh, oh, uh, slash TD uh, there we go we got one out of 157 so that's not gonna give me the right but uh, CMC link as uh, is, is the class attribute that's going to give us that so to be a little more specific uh, table Bitcoin row find element um, we can uh, we'll do a CSS selector and uh, dot CMC link. 
and then we get the text on that and that gives us Bitcoin slash BTC. Well, that's a little better. It doesn't have the buy and it doesn't have the logo. Um, another thing we can do is we can, uh, I think we just find the ptag.txt. Nope. Uh, oh, uh, here's what we can do. We can do dot cmc link. Bitcoin row find elements CMC link and we've got four. Uh, four uh, <coughs> element in Let's just do the e dot text uh, for uh, for e in. Um, so there we go. So we can see we got these. Uh, so that's not great. We're only getting uh, to separate those uh, in a not very good way. So we've got apparently four uh, elements within that row element. Some so within the tables uh, that are returning, including one that's blank, and it doesn't separate uh, Bitcoin and BTC. We need to go back to the drawing board here. Um, so if we do table slash uh, table t body, I'm gonna switch to CSS. Uh, tr, we've got a hundred, right? And then we can say um, we might have to do td uh, nth of type. Uh, three. There we go. Um, and then what do we have under there? We have a uh, class equals CMC link. And then what if we have P under there? We have 38, right? Uh, yep. And yeah, we want to do T, TR, nth of type. Get the first one, and then we want to go uh, P, one of two. So we get yeah, there we go. So P is Bitcoin and P is BTC. So this gives us a uh, a working CSS selector. Let's just make sure that's right. So for each element, we get a uh, a CSS. So for uh, TR in Table find elements by tag name tr. Let's we'll just build it up from scratch. There we go. All right. Uh, so then what we want to do is we want to say row equals tr. Uh, no, we don't. Want we don't want to do that quite yet, but what we want to do is we want to do uh, name equals tr uh, tr dot uh, find element by CSS selector and uh, nth of type is Three. Yep. Td nth of type dash p, and then uh, we want to go p. Uh, let's do this. Find elements. No. Let's let's do it this way. I'm torn here. Uh, name uh, abbreviation 
equals, uh, can I do tuple here? I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I'm missing a parenthesis over here. Tuple, tuple. You say tuple, I say tomato. All right, I guess we need to uh, do that. Uh, print uh, I must have gotten something wrong in the translation. What is it? Is it Command E to go to the end? Whoa. Oh. I'm expecting this to be two, right? It's zero every time. I know I want to hop over here and uh So this will give me all of my nah, I don't know. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the values here out of selenium and it's it's a booger. All right, um, zero. Okay, um, so in this row or in this table uh, cell, I have this div here, I have this link, I have this div, has this image, and this div which contains the text. Uh, I go uh, by the font weight, but I really just want to say I want the first P and the second P. And I want to do it in an easier way. Uh, and that easier way I'm going to use is beautiful. So if I'm giving up on Selenium for now, uh, so um, what I want to do instead is I want to just use beautiful soup. 
to uh, parse my HTML. And so we can say goodbye to Selenium, at least for now. So let's see, next thing I want to do is uh, I still got my table, right? Yep. Actually, let's get out of there completely. And I want to, uh, from, or I, would, I just want to uh, pip and install uh, beautiful soup 4. Version 4 is important. And uh, we'll see in a minute. And then the package for Beautiful Soup 4 is actually called BS4. So when we write our code, we're going to, uh, when we get there, we're going to, okay, it looks like it's got it in there and it's uh, downloading the dependencies. We're going to do from BS4 import Beautiful Soup, capital B, capital S. Um, and we'll see how that works in just a moment. And also, the other thing I need is uh, I need to pip and install requests. And lastly, to get it all done at once, I'm going to pip and install CSV so that we can use the CSV library. Feel free to skip ahead about 30 seconds here, I think. All right. I said all right. All right. IPython. Now we can see in our pip file we've got beautiful soup four and we've got requests. I'm going to uh, need to exit out again. Just install the CSV library. Uh, oh, maybe that's included. All right, back to IPython. Uh, so. First, we're going to use requests instead of Selenium, right? So I'm going to import requests. And now requests, I can just do requests.get, right? And I can just do like uh, HTTPS, uh, what is it again? Coin market cap. And we get a response. So our response is here, this underscore. So response equals request.get. And the content of our response, the, the HTML, is our response.content. So that's our body. You can see uh, response.content is a string. But it's the string of the whole HTML, not just the table. Well, um, pandas can handle that, right? Import pandas. And we can say pandas uh, load HTML. Uh, nope. Uh, what is it? Uh, I need to peek again. Read HTML. And we can uh, get a data frame that way. And our data frame has 100 rows, and it's the same thing, right? Uh, it's going to be... Uh, Oh, my eye look, uh, yeah, um, oh, uh, because it is a uh, data frame sub zero, uh, dot I look. 
Sub one gives us Bitcoin, right? Uh, Ethereum, oh, sub zero then. Uh, oh, because it creates the header itself. All right, so we can, we can uh, use beautiful soup, or I mean, we can use request library instead of Selenium. Now, some pages you may need to interact with the browser. Um, you may need to uh, create a session and go through and navigate to the page with the table you want to get to. In that case, use Selenium. If you can just load a page uh, or a base URL in this case and get your table that way, you can use uh, something like the request library, which just makes an, HT uh, an HTTP request. It calls, uh, calls it via a library and you don't need a browser. That's nice for being able to run it on a server or a continuous integration where you might not be able to run a browser. So we, we've got a response content, right? And we've got our data frame, but we're not, we don't want to use the data frame because the problem here is the, the name, right? Uh, pandas by default gets Bitcoin, it gets one, it gets BTC, and it gets this buy tag or button or whatever it is, and it mixes it all together. We want to be able to separate this out and um, in order to do that, we're going to use beautiful soup. So from BS4, import beautiful soup. And then we create our soup. Now, beautiful soup is an HTML parsing library. It has a lot of helpful utilities, uh, but what it really excels at as what it really excels at is um, parsing non-perfect HTML. It's not necessarily valid XML. So soup equals uh, beautiful soup. Uh, this is our constructor. It's going to call our init method and it can take our HTML uh, our response data uh, content and then it takes as the second argument. We want to tell it what we're using. So we want to pass in HTML.parser as our second argument. Uh, if you don't add that second argument, it's gonna want you to install uh, a, an XML library and use XML parsing, but then it's gotta be valid XML or pretty close to it, which I think um, maybe our libraries will take care of that. Uh, if we're using Selenium, uh, Chrome is going to uh, churn whatever HTML you it gets into something valid-ish, or at least something valid XML. So now we've got a soup and our beautiful soup object, uh, when we print it out, um, see it's a, it's a beautiful soup object, but when we print it, it prints out HTML. And then with our soup, we can, uh, we can, find, uh, we can find a table and it returns just our table. Or we can, uh, and then we can do table.findAll and then we can get our th, right? And we get our headers. And what we can do then is we can um, for header, uh, let's go, yeah, for heading in table find th. We can uh, print uh, heading dot uh, text. And we get name, price, 24 hour, etc. market cap. All right, um, and we can use a list comprehension to do it the same way we did with Selenium, right? So uh, we can do headings equals uh, heading.text, and then we probably want to do uh, strip any white space, and we just change our loop into a list comprehension that way. Well, not quite that way. All right, so now we have a list of our headings. That's a good start from Beautiful Soup. And then we can do the same thing. So we can do for row in table uh, dot find all tr in print row. And we'll see that each of these rows, it gives us the HTML for the row. And what we can then do is we can for each uh, element in the row for uh, for uh, let's do this. Uh, we're going to call it for TR and for TD because that's what I did before in 
tr.findAllTD. And we can print the TD. Uh, my finger's on the wrong keys. And we're printing all of our TDs. And what we want to do, remember, we're looking for this class CMC link. Um, and we want to tell what's going on. So we're losing our CR tags. Um, and we only want to get our first few rows. So um, the other thing we can do is we can also limit equals 10. So it's only going to get our first 10 rows. And we can see our last row here. Is it? It's polka dot. So we need, it's not inclusive. Uh, we want to get 11 rows. And uh, let's, let's also add a, just an empty print statement to make it easier to see with, uh, the spacing in between. Actually, um, we want to do that outside of our loop. So for each row, we're going to print an extra line. So this gives us uh, a single TRs. And we've got here, okay, we've got Doge logo. This The, the last one is Doggy Coin. And, uh, and the first one should be Bitcoin, right? Uh, currencies Bitcoin. And then uh, the next one, I'm, I'm a little uh, punch drunk on here, and, and Ethereum is the next one. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We want to identify our third table, and how can we do that? Um, if it uh, Or TD and TR dot uh, find all, and let me see how beautiful soup parses. Uh, okay, so we can just say uh, p nth of time. Um, great, we'll, we'll refer to that. Um, T uh, so we're going to we're going to go here to print T D dot text dot strip to strip the white space. And we're yeah we're going to print that, and we're also going to um, tr dot find td nth of type um, three, and then p. So this is actually giving me the the name, and then we're just going to uh, we're going to try to print names sub zero. We're just going to print names actually. We just want to get, okay. So let's let's eliminate uh, all this other stuff. Let's actually do four. In names, we will uh, print name. So it should print Bitcoin and BTC, etc. But it's not going to. Yeah, 
Maybe I need to uh, And then I can uh, print name column, make sure we've got that. None, 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 none. Oh, well, this should be TR. Is it typos to the rescue? Um, beautiful soup, CSS selector. Ah, soup.select. Hello, this is Aaron. Hi, I'm Lisa calling you from Delaware.